being a programmer is pretty easy. A lot of people think writing software is difficult. It's really not. Writing good software, well, it's just a little bit harder than just writing software. 99% of the software we interact with every day, especially in the business world, is just going to be forms. We're going to be filling out forms. That's super simple, whether it's, you know, entering something into a web search, filling out logs for work, filling out forms for work. Doing that is super simple. Anybody can do it. Anybody can be a programmer. To be a good programmer takes a little bit more effort, and then to be a great programmer, basically you're John Carmack, and, and very few people get to that level. But I want to show you today how taking the basic things you do, and literally taking a few seconds sometimes, can make it so much easier for the end user and for you. And these come down to my own little personal rules, which I have a lot of, but these one or two rules here make it easier again for the end user and you. And when I'm at work or anywhere and I'm filling out forms and I see people not doing these things, I think, wow, no effort was put into this whatsoever. And basically it comes down to these two rules. Limit what the user can input. Sometimes you just have to give them a text box to fill in something. But a lot of times you can give them a list to choose from and that makes it easier for them and for you. It makes things more consistent. So for example, if you're trying to collect someone's name, you don't know what their name's going to be. You might just have to give them a plain text box to fill it out. But if you're filling out forms for your business and you're having the employees enter their name, they should be able to check their name from the list because you should have a list of employees and that prevents inconsistencies. For example, my name is Christopher, spelled K-R-I-S-T-O F-E-R. Not the most common way of spelling Chris. Uh, I've met lots of Chris's spell their name with a K, but very few who have the F at the end or just one F. Some people have two Fs. So when I'm filling out my name, if someone gives me an input box, a lot of times I'm just going to type Chris. But sometimes I might type Christopher. If someone else is filling out my name, lots of times, even though they know my name is Chris with a K, they will just type C-H-R-I-S because they're not thinking. And you want your information that's being logged or put into a database to be consistent. You don't want to have to search for the forms that my name is on and not find all the results and try to figure out why because someone misspelt it or maybe I capitalized wrong, maybe I just hit the wrong key. My last name's pretty long and lots of times when I'm typing fast, I'll leave out a letter. Making it selectable from a list prevents that from happening. Also, having a list, we come to rule number two. You should try to always, but especially if your list starts getting long, my rule is more than 20 or so items in the list, the list should be searchable. This is super easy to do and you can just have a simple search, a search that searches for more than one item, you know, a string, or you can have a full fuzzy search. So I'm going to give you a bunch of examples today, and a lot of it isn't even really programming. We're going to be looking at creating the interface in with very, very basic HTML, as minimal as it can get. I'm not working on how the program can look, which is also important. I'm talking about functionality today. But we're going to show you how just taking an input and then making things searchable and list forms so much easier on you and the end user. Let's have a look. Okay. The most basic example, an input box. The user can click on this box and type stuff. Let's look at the code, or code if you want to call it code. It's HTML. That's it. I mean, obviously, if you're going to submit the form, you need a little more information, but not much. You need a, a form, a submit button, and give this an ID of some sort or name. Uh, so yeah, but again, if I'm filling this out, did I type in Chris? Did I type in Chris lowercase? Did someone else fill it out and spell my name like this? There could be a lot of options and, and you want to avoid that when possible. So the next option is a data list. So it's a list that they can choose from. Let's look at that. So basically it just, it's a select, I say it's a data list, this is a select list. So we have select and then we have all the options here, okay? Uh, another rule of mine uh, that I didn't mention earlier is Make your list alphabetized. They should be alphanumeric. So it's very simple. So that, that's an example of a drop down list, but things aren't alphabetized. And I can't believe how many times I see this where literally you just have to list it alphabetically. You should be able to dump it that way with a script. So here's that same list, uh, about 200 names or so, alphabetical order. So now uh, they can choose from the list, but also the basic select list in HTML is somewhat searchable. So like I can hit TR and it will jump to, well, there are no TR names in here, but I can type in T and we'll jump to T names. I can type in ST, it will jump to the first ST name and then I can scroll through those. Even without the list open, if I'm clicked in here, I can type in P and it jumps to the P's or I can type in PAU and there we go. So we can go through the list and you know you're gonna get a consistent name with that. This option has been around forever. Again, it's just a select list with options and this will work way back in browsers going back 20 years, you know. The next option is 
written basically the same, but is slightly different. It's a data list. It's a little bit newer. Uh, so again, we'll look at the code here. So I have an input box, but I give it a, a list. I say, look at the list with the ID of my list or whatever you want to call it. And then instead of select, you just say data list and give it that ID. And then I have the same list as options. So how is this different than just a select list? Well, now when I click, click into this box here, I can do a drop down here, which I can scroll through. I still have them alphabetized. But now it has, it isn't a full fuzzy search, but it's a little more. So the problem before is if I wanted to find a name in here, let's say I click in here and I type in J-O-N-H, it brings me to Johns and then Johnson and then Johnson and then Johnson. So there's a few of them. But if I want someone with the first name of John, I can't jump to them unless I know their last name. And maybe you can't remember someone's last name, you're filling out a form for them. Where with the data list in here, I can type in J-O-H, oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong tab here, J-O-H-N, and you can see I have Foster John, Fowler John, John's Ernst. So it's not a full fuzzy search, but it's looking for anything with that match in it. So that is a bit better than, actually for me, I think it's a lot better than a uh, select list, although it is a lot newer and some older browsers aren't going to support it. Safari, which is always behind all of the browsers, might have issues with it. And then the only other problem I have with this is when I do it on my phone, um, this drop-down list sometimes covers up my keyboard. So, and I've tried it with two different browsers and different keyboards. Uh, so hopefully that's an issue that gets fixed. You, but if I click on it, it covers up the keyboard. And then like if I click on it again, it goes behind the keyboard. So it's not the end of the world, but that might confuse some end users. But again, this is not so much about HTML. I'm just using this as an example of improving on searches. So here's another option when it comes to data input. We have a input. Let's look at the code for this. It's just an input, but you can give different types. You can give email type. You can give phone numbers. There's a lot of different types that you can do with HTML5. And one of them is number. So now, if I come in here, I can use this. Uh, this little tab to go up and down. I can type in numbers. And here I'm in Brave Browser, which is a Chrome-based browser. But if I try to type in other characters, it doesn't let me. But be aware that if you're in another browser, such as here we are, the same code in Firefox, it does let me input uh, characters. So you would have to do some sort of uh, check on that to make sure the input is valid. Uh, also, on a mobile device, this is nice because when you click on this, when it brings up your keyboard, it's going to bring up the number pad rather than the letters, so it's really easy to just type in a number. Another option, if you're inputting numbers, would be something like a slider like this. Uh, basic example doesn't show what number you've selected, so you obviously would want to add some code to that. But let's look at the code. So we just say input. Here we're saying a range type. And we can give a max and a min, which is nice because now I can limit what numbers they pick. I have the default value. I can set it to whatever number I want in the range. I don't want them to pick more than 100 or less than 1. And you can also put in um, intervals. So if you want to go every 5 or every 10 or even a fraction, you can do that. So that's, that's an option, but it takes a little more effort because you're going to have to put in you know, the output because they have to know what number they're selecting. And it's kind of feels intuitive if you're working with like volume control or something like that. In general, I wouldn't use this, but it is an option. For me, lots of times what I'll do, I'll just do a drop down list. So this is just a, a select list again. Let's look at the code, select option. And here I statically put in the numbers, but you can use JavaScript or even server side script to generate this so you can change the numbers at will. And that will limit the range. So they can pick zero through one, but you can also do something like this where I have leader characters. Maybe you want it to always be a three digit character. So it has those leader, zero, uh, leader zeros. So um, yeah, limiting what they can input. And again, uh, benefit of this, uh, so without the leader zero, I can type in eight and it jumps to eight, or I can do eight again, it will jump down to 80, and then I can go through. So you can still jump down the list, they can type a little bit and then use the arrows. Uh, with this, with the leader zeros, if I hit eight, yeah, it doesn't work because of the leader zeros. So that's something to think about, all depending on your use case. Let's look at one last example here. So this last example here is, um, basically the same thing, but again using the data list box. So now I have the leader zeros, but I can type in eight and it brings up every number that has the eight, whether it begins with it, it's in the middle or at the end, I can hit eight again and now I have 88. So I can type what I'm looking for, but it also narrows down the list and I can select limiting what they can put in there. Um, so 
yeah, that is some examples of just the little bit of effort. Again, I mean, look at this. We go from an input box to a drop-down list to a sorting just by just by adding that list. And again, you already should have a list of employees. It's just basically of copy and pasting it and putting the option tags around it, uh, which could, again, I statically did it, but if you're dumbing it out of a database, very easy to code that out. And then to make it even more searchable is, again, just to use that um, data list instead of the select list. Uh, again, relatively new, might have some issues use whatever again this is not so much about the HTML but examples of how you can improve your code so let's do it again let's jump to our terminal here and work with some shell scripts so again if I wanted to get the username for example in a shell script in bash here I can say read name and of course they type whatever and it puts that into a variable called name so they can echo out name obviously you would want to ask them for something so I would say read dash dash prompt actually sorry dash p and I can say enter your name and then it says enter your name and I can type in Chris and you can see even there I typed it fast and the R came up capital uh, which you wouldn't want uh, but now I can echo out that variable so that's how easy it is to get user input in the shell let's improve upon that if I cat out here I have a file called name.list which is that same list we were looking at in the web browser uh, over 200 names or about 200 names uh, again right now you can see it's not it's not uh, alphabetized all I have to do is pipe that into sort oh sorry gotta spell things right sort and now it's alphabetized there's no reason to not have your list in an alphanumeric format that's how easy it is okay so how do you get the user input how do you make it searchable for this list I mean that's a pretty long you can't use like a, a case input for that you know so a tool uh, that's not a core tool but is cross-platform you can get for Windows Mac Linux uh, you can get it for arm it, it's it's easy to get it on all your modern systems is basically FCF which I've talked about a lot in the past it's a fuzzy finder you pipe any any input to it and it makes it a searchable list so now but it's not just um, this is way better than what we were looking at in the web browser with even the data list because this is a true fuzzy finder so I can type in again John and we get uh, John 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 John's Johnson this John Johnson Johnson but I even got Jonathan because it matches some of the letters because it's a true fuzzy finder again once I choose this I hit enter and it outputs name so all I have to do is pipe that into a variable so basically I would take it like this I would say name equals now when I hit it again I can type in John I can choose one of these John's and now if I echo out dollar sign name I've got that name I got the first name last name how I expect it to be uh, I, but one more thing if uh, we're doing this you realize it's obviously we're picking a name but what, what are we picking am I picking my name am I picking a co-workers name so what you can do is with this dash dash prompt and we can just say uh, enter your name and now down at the bottom here you can see it says enter your name we have 206 names to choose from I can see PAT and you can see I have Patricia I'm gonna choose Patricia or maybe I can choose Peterson again it's it's like um, maybe you're thinking uh, maybe I can do BT H so I'm doing uh, you know the B for Brown and then Thomas so it's, it's a true fuzzy find this is way better than any other search and there are uh, JavaScript libraries out there for doing this sort of thing but it's not as simple as this fuzzy finder I choose the name and then again that's in the variable for name and I can echo that out we can do the same things for numbers and there's probably a few ways to do this if I go echo um, and I put in parentheses here 0 dot dot 100 it's going to echo out 0 through 100 what I can do now uh, and there's probably a better way to do this but just off the top of my head I can just say uh, make each space with TR I can turn them into new line characters and then again I can just pipe that into FCF and now I can type in 8 and I have all these numbers I can hit 8 again and I've selected 88 and 88 is the output and again we can give it that dash dash prompt and I can say enter a number so if you're getting like the quantity or something whatever you're going to ask them for you can do that and of course that would now oh what did I do wrong oh I hit up again arrow again there we go and now I can enter a number and it's limiting me to this list somewhat uh, I would do have to like if I 
type in some number that's not in there and I hit enter, it's going to output nothing. So you would have to do an error check to make sure that the answer isn't blank. Um, but for the, that would just be one more line of code. You would just say something like if, you know, whatever variable equals blank or null or whatever you want to do, exit or re-ask the same question. But we have this, again, I can type in a number, I'm limited to the range, and if I want it to have those leader zeros, all you have to do is add in however many leader zeros I want. If I want to make sure it's a three-digit number, I put in three zeros here, or whatever number I want to start at. Um, so I can, I can start at 10, maybe whatever number it is, they can't select less than 10. So now if I go uh, you know, to the top of the list here, it says 10. So I can't pick uh, just one, I have to pick at least 10 to 100. Anyway, those are examples. Uh, again, any language you're programming in, these things should be simple. Again, basic rules. Don't let them, whenever you can, enter whatever they want. Limit it to a list. Make that list um, alphabetical, alphanumeric, if it, there's numbers in there. Uh, make it searchable. The more searchable it is, the better. So again, I have over 200 names in this. It only takes a couple of characters. So let's say I type in T, A. Look, already the list has narrowed down to, what, 15 names in here from 200. It, it, usually three characters is enough to get your list down to something easily selectable. Um, so that's that. And uh, yeah, so limit the user input, make it a list, make it searchable whenever possible. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you start implementing this because there's so many times uh, in my work life or going to doctor's offices or just filling out forms places where it's like, why is this not a searchable list? It's like, it almost makes me just want to, to bang on the keyboard and put in <laughs> garbage. It's kind of like when someone hands me a paper form to fill out. It's like, I'm going to write as sloppily as I can because I should be able to fill this out digitally because either you're going to enter into a computer, which means you're just wasting somebody else's time because you're having me fill this out and then someone inputting into a computer, or you're not really going to use this paperwork at all. So just follow these rules. Chris says, that's what I say. Do it for me. If not for you, if not for your end user, do it for me. Filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. Please visit there. Please support me. Patreon.com. There's links in the description there. Also at my website, uh, which again is filmsbychris.com. Chris with a K. When you're there, you can search through my videos here. Uh, there's a few sections. You can see software I've written, games I've created, and you can also support me with LibrePay, PayPal, or Patreon. If you can't support me financially, like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things help me out. I hope that you have a great day.